Hi there, welcome to this build of a 45 inch wingspan quiver. Now the quiver is a scaled down version of the iconic 1930s Quaker Flash Flying Quaker. And we're building this from a great set of plans that I downloaded from the Outer Zone website. And these are free to download and there'll be a link in the description below this video if you, uh, if you want to get those plans. They are really nicely detailed, they're a great set. Now up to this point we've more or less got all of the building work finished and we're almost ready to start covering which I'm really looking forward to doing but there's one last job that I want to do before I start that covering and that is to make the undercarriage and we're going to be making that out of some 14 gauge and 12 gauge music wire and we're going to be soldering that up. Now I'll show you what I'm going to do. Right we've got the the plans here on the bench and we can see we've got the shape outlined for the two pieces that make up the landing gear and this is kind of a praying mantis I think it's called type of landing gear where it, it's going to project forward of the fuselage like that so it will probably be the wheels will probably be around here and slightly forward of the prop in actual fact and I'm going to be using as I said this 12 gauge music wire and this 14 gauge music wire which works out you can see I've put on here uh, 2.4 mil and, and 2 mil just just for my own sort of uh, guide now the wheels I'm going to be using, these are Cavan wheels and they're really really light and I really like them. The only slight downside is that they're a little bit big, the, the hole in the middle for this 14 gauge music wire uh, to go on there. So what I've got is some um, brass tube which will fit nicely inside there and the music wire will fit inside that and that will just act as a little bit of a bushing so I will cut myself a couple of pieces for each wheel and that will bring the size down nicely so that's that's that sorted now I'm going to bend these up using the uh, the templates here with a slight variation now if I turn this over we can see that actually the main leg which comes back to the firewall here is oh it's a it's 60 well if I measure the base it's about 65 mil and that's quite wide it actually projects beyond the width of the fuselage so I'm going to narrow that down so rather than the legs coming out here and uh, and the horizontal bit sticking out from the fuselage I'm going to bring it in a little bit so they come out like that. I think that will just be a, a neater solution. And the same with the front. This is quite wide for this front leg and actually projects beyond the um, the engine bearers. So I'm going to narrow it down so it actually fits inside this uh, these fuselage sides here and so it will come out like that. I just think that will look a little bit neater. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up some little brass um, clips, clamps that are going to attach on the back for the uh, the rear piece of the uh, landing gear and then uh, the same for the front piece and I'll actually screw them into the beach on here for the front and I'm thinking I'll probably put on a piece of beach at the back here to support these uh, these clips on the back. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I'll get these bent up with these narrower centers and oh, it's worth being mindful that these legs are slightly different lengths so and I don't think that was intended so we need to make sure we get those right so I'll get the legs bent up I will um, get the uh, bushes done for the inside of here and then we'll have a look at doing these clamps right a quick update on where I am I've cut a couple of uh, brass bushings of this tube which just slide into the the four mil hole in the center of the Cavan wheels and my 14 gauge music wire will just go in that and that just makes that uh, a lot better it's still nice and free plenty of movement but uh, it's just not quite as sloppy so we've got those done which is good 
I've also bent up the rear piece of landing gear, I haven't done the, the front yet, and I've cut and sanded a piece of beach which I'm going to epoxy into there which will be the support for that, uh, for that landing gear. And I've, I've done a clip and the clip will go like that. It will screw into the beach and I'll be using these um, servo type screws with the, uh, with the integral washer. And one of the advantages of making the, the, the landing gear narrower here is that I can then put the clips at the furthest limit that I can, like that on either side, and it will stop the landing gear from moving side to side. It will just brace it. If this is coming out here, like shown on the plans, you can't shove the clips out that far. It just look a bit weird. So that will be better being narrower and that clip will screw into that beach really nice. Now, as you can see, I've made a clip for the 14 gauge and I've also made a clip here for the, uh, the, the front leg for the, uh, the, the 12 gauge. And I'm just using, I've got a sheet of brass, half mil brass here, and I've cut a strip just using tin snips, just cut that along and uh, taking the rough edges off. And to make the clip, all I'm doing is I'm just folding a piece of a piece of the brass around the music wire like this. And then I'm getting my parallel pliers and I'm just pinching that. So if I take that out to the end and then I will just pinch that. There we go. Pinch that like that and we have our clip nice and easy to do and then I can just trim that to size with my um, with my wire, um, uh, metal cut, uh, sheet metal cutters and we can just trim off the corners give it a little bit of a sand uh, just or a little bit of a file just to get those uh, those rough edges off but what and, and to smooth that around but what I need to do as well is to drill a hole in the center so I'll just mark that with the center punch and we'll get that drilled and uh, and I'll make another one for the front leg but I just thought I'd show you how I was making those it just makes some really nice tidy little brass clips right well another update cracking on with this now I've got my rear leg completed and that will go as we saw earlier I think onto this piece of beach like that pointing forward and that will meet up with this piece which I've now just bent up slightly thinner and that is going to be attached onto the beach engine bearers like that just giving enough room for the uh, the mounting bolts for the engine. I mean, you could actually combine the two, but I'd rather separate it a little bit. I will need to just take out a little bit of the balsa on these side cheeks, just to, just to allow this to sit down properly, but that'll be fine. So that's gonna go like that, and that will go like that. Now, this looks fiddly trying to get this right, and so what I've done is I've drawn out the bottom of the fuselage where the landing gear is going to go and I'm going to screw this onto here using those uh, servo screws that we've got I'm going to screw that onto there I am also then going to put the front piece on and I'm going to bring these together and I'm going to make sure that they're actually bent right and the right length to actually do what they're supposed to do. Because I've got a feeling that we might need to trim the front leg. And much rather to mount it on a block like this rather than on the fuselage, and then to get it soldered up. My experience with soldering is that one of the hardest things when you're soldering is when you haven't got the item you're soldering firmly fixed together and if I'm trying to solder this and it's not rigid it's going to be 
really awkward. Right, well this is proving to be an interesting exercise. So I've got the two legs on the, uh, on the block, the right distance apart to go on the front of the fuselage. And they don't really kind of seem to meet up very well. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm not sure these uh, designs were particularly well thought through. But what we can do is we can turn this over and we can line up these axles with the axles on the plans and which we know is the right distance on the the actual fuselage itself which we'll put on so i've lined that up with the uh with the axles uh there we go and we can see that these don't come together the front one needs widening as you can see there's a, a gap there so the front one needs widening and we then need to choose the angle we're going to have it for the, the rear one and the front. Now, I think if we have the front leg, more or less, so it gives us enough to bend down to meet this, so about like that. So what we'll do is we'll put a bend on there to meet this here, and then we'll trim off the excess. I would have thought that would be about right. Now if we put a wheel on there, just for effect, and we can bring the fuselage into play, and that will go on there like that. And we can see that that, I think, will look about right. The prop will be about here. I need to just check where the prop is actually that it's not going <laughs> it's not going to catch the wire so i will get the engine just put on there with the right size prop i think that is probably well worth doing so i'll do that and we'll have another look right i've now got this engine bolted into the uh, the fuselage and i've got a nine inch prop the biggest i will use will be a nine inch i probably only use an eight inch i certainly won't go any bigger than nine now if i hold the fuselage in position in relation to the landing gear and that is just there I could just put that weight on it now that is set up right I've set the undercarriage so that it's pointing forward still I've got the center of the axle in line with the prop and there is plenty of clearance there for the uh, for the prop to be well clear of the landing gear. I thought I'd show this again quickly. Now I've got the wire trimmed and, uh, and bent into shape. So you can see here we've got loads of clearance for the prop. And if I take that off and uh, take this off, you can see I've just bent this wire now and we've got these two pieces parallel to each other. And, uh, and they're ready to be tinned. So I will just separate these. I will clean them up and then we'll have a look at the tinning process. And by tinning I mean just giving them a coat of silver solder. And if I do that to all four surfaces and then I'm going to put them together and I will wrap them in some copper wire and then I will solder them again. But I think by tinning them first I will get a much better finish. And Experience has shown me that the, the best thing to get these tinned nicely is not to overheat them. If I overheat them, they're going to get black, they're going to get uh, oxidised or they're going to get dirt on them. And the best thing is just get them hot enough to get the solder moving and, uh, and covering. Need to be as clean as possible, so I've cleaned them up with some um, sandpaper and I'm going to use this flux, which is um, it's quite a strong acid flux that I use for plumbing uh, copper pipe. So we'll get on and we'll see how that goes. So I'm just covering these now with, uh, with some flux and I will probably put a bit of flux on as I go. So we'll just get some heat on it but as I said don't want to get too much heat I can't tell you the composition of this solder I've had it a long time but we just want to get this so it's just starting to melt the uh, the solder 
a lot of soldering I've seen in the past doesn't go very well mainly because people get it um, too hot. And you can see now that's just coated that nicely and I might just put a little bit more flux on and just heat that up just a little bit more but we're as good as there with that now. There we go, look at that, that's uh, don't want to get too much on, I've got just a, perhaps a little bit too much there, that's okay. So, I'm going to do all four of these now and then we'll get them bound up. Right, well my copper wire's just arrived and it's actually uh, 0.6 of a mil, but it's lovely and thin and bright, it's just what I wanted, I'm really pleased with it. I, I just bought that off, off eBay. Now, I've bound up one of the legs uh, just where the join is and I've done that as neat as possible just to get that, hopefully that's in focus, to get that nice and uh, tightly wound with the copper wire and having done the one I'm just lining this up again and making sure that the prop is nice and clear of the wheels and, uh, and it is so that is great so we'll put that safely on one side and what I'm going to do now is bind up this second, uh, or the, the legs on this side, and then we'll solder it. Right, I've got both of these bound up now with the wire, and I'm going to solder it. Now the trick to doing this, so it looks neat in my mind, is to get the wire nicely tightly bound, and so that looks neat from the start and then plenty of flux so it's all nice and clean and, and by the way I will put a link to the flux and the uh, blow lamp that I use in the description below the video. So we've got the flux on there now and the trick I think is to get as little solder as possible just to coat all of that. We don't want any big blobs but if we do get any then we can always uh, trim them off. You can trim soft solder with a knife and you can file it. It does, does clog up your files, but you know if we want to make the job a little bit neater, we can do that. So, as little heat as possible to get this uh, melting. There we go. I've just cleaned them up and thought I would just show how that looks. I've just had it in the sink with a, a toothbrush and a little bit of uh, soap just to get all that flux off and, and they've come up lovely. I'm, I'm really pleased with the way that's looking. Hopefully that's, uh, that's in focus. And now what I'm going to do, or what I've just done is, I've given them a rub with some, uh, some wire wool just to get off any uh, dark marks from the flux and that. And I'm now going to darken them down using this gun blue pen by Presto. It's used for uh, touching up gun barrels and breeches that have just got marked. And what it does is it just darkens down the wire. And hopefully we can see that. I'll just zoom in a little bit actually. So we just use the pen to, uh, to darken down the steel like that. And you can see we just rub that on there and you can see the effect that has had already and it just darkens down the steel and to my mind just makes it look a little bit uh, a little bit nicer now this doesn't work on stainless steel it just works on uh, steel like this music wire and like i said it's used for touching up gun barrels and breeches well as you can see i've now got the undercarriage fitted to the fuselage and I feel really really pleased with this I think it looks absolutely great and we can take a closer look at this now right well the first thing you can see is that the wire needs trimming here for a uh, to get the axle the right length but I always leave that till the last minute because if I wanted to add a little bit of nose weight then I could put some heavier wheels on if I did that they might have slightly wider hubs and if I've cut these short we could have a problem so I always leave that right till the end. We can see on the underside 
we've got those screwed in nicely into the beach, nicely lined up, and that is really solid. I'm really pleased with that. We've got plenty of clearance for the uh, for the prop. Goes nowhere near the the wire or if we look at the front, nowhere near the wheels. It's slightly uh, closer on this side just because of the right thrust that we, we have on the engine there. But that has gone on really nice. And you can see I've darkened it down with that uh, gun bluing pen, which has just made it a little bit more subdued, a little bit more subtle. Well, I have really enjoyed the process of making this undercarriage getting the wire bent up, getting it soldered and, and all made up. I guess it's a, a change from doing the balsa work and I do love the balsa work, but it's great to see it now all finished. So I'm gonna draw this video to a close now and I hope you found this useful and interesting. I hope you've enjoyed seeing it as much as I've enjoyed making it. And I hope you'll come back and see how we get on in the construction of this 45 inch quiver which actually in the next episode we're going to start putting the laminating film onto the onto the main wings I think so anyway thanks very much for watching <laughs>